Greetings, welcome, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Kingdom Economics. Today we're talking about sowing and reaping. We're coming into that fall season. We're coming into the reaping season. And you have to understand that if you're not reaping this season, you can be planning your sowing season for this spring. You have to understand these cycles in order for you to understand the areas that are breaking out in your life. In this harvest season, it is important that we focus on the importance of sowing and reaping because a lot of people want to reap a thing, but they're not focused on sowing in the time that is necessary for them to stimulate. The tree doesn't come from the, the fruit. The tree comes from the seed. So it has to be invested into so people want to do something or they want to see a seed of fruit level of their life, a, 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 a bountiful harvest break out in their world where the fruit is bearing fruit each and every season. And that fruit carries seed of potentiality, but they're not willing to do the work of the sowing that it takes for that to break out in their life. And then they have to sow in the spirit and you have to sow in the flesh. So we're going to start talking today a little bit about about sowing and reaping. We're going to do some deep diving into this subject. And the more that you're studying in this kingdom economics ministry and you're willing to invest is more that you're going to reap a bountiful return. For those who are new here, we are here to flow in the prosperity and provision that has been designed for us from before we are designed and have been arrived into this human experience. We are in a human experience. We are everlasting souls experiencing a human experience. And you have to understand the temporal nature of this experience for you to know that it is easy for you to flow into the natural, supernatural conduct that is positioning everything in your experience by aligning yourself with God. Okay. So we're here to bring forth abundance flowing freely in every aspect of your world through this kingdom economy. And we are here to circulate the frequency of overflow in our lives. We want a currency of overflow. We don't just want to overflow in the season. We want to flow permanently where there is no repentance, where there is no sorrow. We want to flow permanently in our lives. And as we exercise here, and as we push forth in our investment, we will stimulate that flow in our world and affairs. All right, so we're going to break in the song. Um, we're going to listen to some music and we're going to listen to some um, it, it, some really, really smooth music, some gospel vibes that will allow you to come into worship and praise and express gratitude for all of the things that God is about to do in your life. God is doing right this very moment and God has done in the history of you and how he's brought you through times that you could have never gotten through on your own, how he's delivered you through situations that you never could have got through on your own. So we have to take a moment first and foremost to say, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing for me right now. Thank you for what you have done. And thank you in advance, calling those things that are not as if they are, we're going to thank them in advance. So for the things that are about to break out in your life.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. All right. So now we are going to go into prayer and then we're going to go into the scripture so that we can listen to the, what the spirit of the God, Lord is putting on our souls today and how he's going to shift our understanding about what he's trying to do for us in our lives. Holy Spirit, descend on our very weary hearts. Lord, come into our world, life, and affairs and destroy any blockages, any disruptions, any interruptions, any distractions that are coming in the wiles of the enemy to be put into our face, into our attention span, into our time, into our capability of worshiping you and knowing you purely and discreetly. Lord, we are asking you to come in and purify our world life and affairs and show us a different outcome. Show us a different output. Lord, we are moving against wiles of the earth and wiles of the devil, and we are coming into your overcoming and your everlasting nature. And so that we are pulling ourselves into alignment with the design that you had for us from the beginning. And we are coming into one one mind, one heart, and one spirit that we understand that it takes for us to have conviction and it takes for us to have submission for us to see the glory of God in the dominion of our lives. Lord, come into our kingdom economy and stir up supernatural, poured out, abundant, overflowing supply systems from places that we have no clue that you could even penetrate. Lord, bring us the the information from the north, south, east, and west of your goodness and your glory. Uh, Lord, bring us the blessings. Lord, break the uh, spirit of this of um, infirmity that is coming into some of the listeners to this message. Lord, I see a break in that someone wants me to pray for their child. Lord, come on, come over that child with the heart of your soul and let the supernatural angels come over and put the glory all over that child and let them be broken off of any uh, stronghold that's coming into their lives, trying to cause health complications. Lord, break us from any strongholds trying to cause complications in our relationships with our friends and our loved ones. Lord, come into any strongholds, trying to come into bringing complications of their of our finances, Lord, of our free flow of your duties, Lord, of anything that you see as good and fit, Lord, break it right now. And let us walk into a newness. Let us walk into a refreshing of the spirit. And let me come and speak the word as you assign it to me. Let it not be none of me and all of you in every aspect of the message today. And let it be more uh, satisfying food, for the listeners so that they can understand the importance of sowing and reaping. Lord, we ask this in your name, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it is. Amen. All right. So our scripture today is going to come from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 9. And it reads... But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. For so let each one gives as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or over necessity or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. All right, so this is some dense meat uh, based scripture that we're going to get into today. So we're going to dive right into it. But this I say, okay. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. So a lot of times in our world, we'll look for places, we'll see places where there has been a uh, deficiency, where there is lack, or oh, I don't have a good relationship, or I don't have a good bank account, or I don't have good health. But what have you sown towards that 
particular reaping process. So for example, if you having compromises in your health, what have you sown towards that compromise? It didn't just come from nowhere. Things grow from seeds. So in your youth, what did you sow so that complication comes up later on? What kind of stress were you poorly managing? What kind of diet plan were you poorly managing? What did you invest in your exercise? What did you invest that created this thing? They said in, in when the wheat and the tares came up together, they said when I was sleeping, someone has done this. Someone has planted seeds of tares amongst the wheat. OK, so when you were sleeping in your consciousness, when you were looking the other way, when you thought it was OK for you to be uh, free while in your youth, then you came out of your uh, older age and started seeing the reaping of the, 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 the tear that you had sown in your youth. Now, that's not saying God cannot supernaturally deliver you. And so we ask for the deliverance of those people who did not know because they were sleeping. And God said, I will separate the wheat and the tear. I will keep your good health. I will I will perfect the things concerning you. I will keep you in good health. I will I will come and bless what it is that you have because I am restoring the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust have stolen. The consciousness, the worms in your consciousness have stolen things from you and your you because if you sow sparingly. You will reap sparingly. So if you do not sow nutrients, don't later on expect to reap the nutrients that you should have sown. Now is the time to, for you to be able to identify what it is that you are supposed to be sowing in order for you to get the reaping that you want out of your life. So if you sow those things, sow them with full force. Don't come and sow with a little bit of sprinkle here and there and be mad because you don't see the provision that another person is putting in their life. Oh, I, I want a music career, right? But then when I go and I look at the superstars, I think, hey, you know what? I'm going to rap like the superstars. I'm going to hold two, two uh, pieces of fruit up in the air and I'm going to be the tree that they are. But they, you don't see the rehearsals. You don't see the investment into the studio. You don't see the tours. You don't see working for free first. You don't see where you're putting the investment in for you to have that reaping. So if you're not willing to do the investment, you will not get the return. That is exactly what it's going to take. And it takes what it takes. And at the end of the day, a lot of people have seen returns of epic proportions, but they have done no sowing. So you reaping, but you're doing no sowing and you're reaping in a flow of somebody else's cyclic energy. But if you don't stake those seeds and sow them somewhere in the time of famine, you don't have anything in your storehouse because you sold sparingly. So just because you coming into a flow right now, that might be your ancestors' money. That might be people who came before you, who prayed before you's money that you happen to be blessed with. Now, what are you going to do when you get your resources? Are you going to put them into the ground so that they can reproduce for generations to come? Or are you going to consume with those and then eat all the seeds that you have, wondering why you can never taste the juiciness of a good fruit harvest in, in the early fall or in the spring, depending on what you sowing because different seasons apply to different types of fruits. So if you're going to sow sparingly, don't expect actual bountiful uh, reaping, right? But he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So if you're going to put your all into it, if you're going to get up there, don't faint in the sewing process. Those who are entrepreneurs, don't faint in the sewing process. There's never been a company that people are taking the advantage of having the luxury and the ability to uh, indulge in the aspects of that company for that has not sold with diligence in order to perform the capability to provide you whatever that product and service is. So let's not be arrogant as if somebody owes you the service that somebody has given because they had to sew for that. People have to get trained for that. There are systems put together for that. Every grocery that gets to your front door came through a reaping. It came through a seed that waded through a tree. It came to the fruit. That fruit was picked. 
It was preserved. It was monitored for any type of damage. It was transported in the exact temperature that it needed to be, in the time frame that it needed to be, with haste and precision to be able to be presented in a very appetizing way at your local grocer and so that you can be able to consume the bountiful harvest. So let's not pretend that that is something that's due to you because what's due to you is for you to stand there looking up at a tree, hoping something falls that you can eat tonight. That's what's due to you. So we have to humble ourselves upon the systems of this world that we were designed to have, having integrity, having honor, having goodwill, being able to give good. What? How are you supposed to get a respect from anybody that you give no respect to? Because he who sows uh, uh, sparingly is going to get a sparing result. If you don't give something, well, how could you expect to return that thing? You're not do that thing. Therefore, how could you expect to return that thing? We have to start looking at where we are sowing bountifully and where we are sowing sparingly. And those bountiful and, and sparing sowing does not, I'm not even talking on money yet. Let's talk about the biggest thing that you can sow. The biggest thing that you can sow is your faith. What is your belief system? What do you believe? Who do men say that I am? What do you believe about me? I don't need, it's not important who I actually am. It's not important that the tree will actually bear fruit. If you don't believe that the tree is going to bear fruit, you're going to go digging that tree up prematurely. And then what do you get from that tree? Nothing. Not because the tree didn't have the ability to give it to you, but were you willing to wait on the tree? Were you willing to go through the process of what it takes to get what it takes out of that? Thing. You have to be able to invest in the world that you want to see. What are you investing in the society that you would like to bring forth? All of the tongue wrestling brings no results because it's what they say. Talk is cheap. What are you investing to try to bring a new community uh, uh, ahead? What are you investing to try to bring the uh, interest and the businesses up in specific communities? I don't want to hear you barking on the internet and one thing and wearing the representation of another. Where are you sowing bountifully and where are you sowing uh, uh, um, uh, sparingly? So if you really want to make a move, sow something. If, so let each one gives as he purposes in his heart. What you purpose in your heart, your purpose, the purpose that you're holding on to in your heart is going to be where you're giving from. So if you feel like you're important, you're going to give your most important giving to you or the things that look like you, or the things that represent you. You're going to invest the most time in the things that look like you, that are part of your purpose, of your heart's purpose, not of your perception of purpose, not what the world has designed as your purpose, but what, the, what your heart has purposed. Not grudgingly of ne or of necessity, necessity. The employment market, the employment system is about to go haywire because the basis of the employment system is a grudgingly giving system. So do not be shocked when it explodes because people do not give to their job from a passion-based scenario. They are giving from necessity and grudgingly. Oh, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to see how long it takes me. If they can go on ahead and get me 15 more minutes for the break, I'm going to go ahead and take my moments. Is the people looking? Let me see if the people look looking. You're grudgingly giving. So do not be shocked what you reap when you're grudgingly giving. Not because you're grudgingly giving your money, your time, 
your attention. You're not giving your attention towards that business, towards that, towards that corporation, towards that project. Your attention is being given to Instagram. Your attention is being given to Facebook. And not to say nothing is wrong with you giving your attention, but where you your attention goes, your energy flows. Now your energy is invested there. So no longer are you invested in a giving, but you're investing in intake, right? In consumption. What am I doing with my time? Is it entertaining me? Is this something I can benefit from? I, 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 I. Because now it has taken away the, is compromise. Your ability to give your attention, your time, your energy. That's the thing that you cannot multiply. People are so grudgingly giving when it comes down to money. Oh, whatever. they want my money. People want my money. At the end of the day, what is it doing for you? All you're doing is serving consumption with the money. So it doesn't matter. You're not taking away an investment basis situation. You're taking away consumption based situation. So you're upset because you couldn't have consumed one more thing. Do you see how we're coming into this world of gluttony that is surpassing all other conceptual sin? And this is getting taking us to a level where we're imploding as a society because the Lord loves a cheerful giver, not a cheerful taker. You're not accounted in the kingdom by the things you can acquire. You're counted in the kingdom by what you give. If you are the boss, if you're a billionaire right now, what's your only objective in life? What can I give? How can I benefit society? What can I affect? What can I influence? That's the only reason why you're even coming into the money in the first place. Other than that, how far do you run out of things to consume if you're a billionaire? You, they're just making up stuff at this point. So at the end of the day, what is your real purpose for being able to acquire things? God does it because he is giving you the responsibility of being the giver of the thing, not the consumer of the thing. The whole world knows how to consume. That's the nature of you being in an animalistic nature. But it takes for a king. It takes for an authority. It takes for you to walk in dominion and be uh, be uh, above the fish of the sea and, uh, and the birds of the air in order for you to see that you are the ball. You're walking into, you, you are gods. The baby G God led under man, a man under authority where you could speak the word and the servant be healed. You could speak the word and the condition be healed. You can speak the word. You're walking into power and presence. Money can't buy this power. Giving away money should be the least of your worries because money can't purchase this power. Money can't come into what we're doing right now. Money is only going to be the manifest realm of all of these things been given. All these things will be added. That's not where your, your bounty is. But if you worship these things, the pagan runs after these things. So if you're coming into a kingdom economy, you understand that God is able to make grace abound towards you. Grace abound towards you. What does that mean? When the world is purchasing things to try to cover themselves, grace is over you. When you can't, when everybody else can't find the supply of a thing, you're just awakened to that supply. When all other things are in chaos, you are in a peace that surpasses all understanding because grace is abounded towards you. That it, that you always, always in all ways have sufficiency in all things. You're sufficient in all things. I didn't say you had all the ones that somebody else has, but are you in supply system? Are you sufficient? In all, can you go around and get what you need? Are you sufficient? You might not have the best car, but do you have sufficiency? You might not have a car at all, but do you have a bus system? You might not have a bus system, but God has God equipped you with a ride from your neighbor. You might, you might not have a ride from your neighbor, but do your knees work? He said, I have sufficiency in all of the things that I take you through when you come unto me and you humble yourself into my word and my and abide in me. Okay, then I'm going to give you sufficiency in all things, and so that and so that that may have 
in all things may have abundance for every good work. Did you have abundance for the stockpile? No, mm -mm. you had abundance to put it on, uh, put it on your your photo. Mm -hmm. You had abundance to show everybody else you abundant. No, oh, okay. They said it's in your things. They said it's for your good works. So I am happy that you are going out today on your good work mission. We're gonna be on a good work mission. You giving me all of your good works. Comment below. Go on ahead, watch the video. Comment below about your good works. What are you good doing? What are you doing for the society? What are you doing as a good work? Put that in the comments. Put that in the chat. Let's talk about the good works. We put too much attention on the world and what the world system is compiling, but we are wanting to focus on good works. So we're gonna go on our good work tour and we're going to focus on our good works, okay? So we're going to be sowing generously and grace, graciously so that we have sufficiency in all things and we're going to have abundance for our every good work. Now, it's time for you to invest in your kingdom economy, not in mine. It's time for you to invest in your kingdom economy. You couldn't possibly expect to get a return for something unless you've made a deposit in it. You can't go to an ATM and stick in a plastic card in somebody else's account that you never had the investment. If you didn't sow into this account, you can't reap from this account. So today we're gonna talk about what you can sow. This is for you. We're gonna move it in reverse this time. You're gonna look for where the, where the lack is. Where are you lacking? Where do you have lack? Where is bounty not breaking out in your life? Where do you want more? Where do you see something missing? Write down five things for each of those areas that you can give right now using your assets, faith, time, energy, attention, or money. Commit to doing one of those things for each area that you are lacking in for the next seven days. This will symbolize giving in that aspect. And then you can confidently expect your harvest. Thank you for your time and attention because it means everything to me. Every moment that you sow here is a declaration that you are looking for supernatural prosperity and provision in your life. If there is something today that touched your spirit, please subscribe to our page, like the video, and share it with those who may be inspired by it. If God puts it on your heart for you to sow into the ministry, into this word, into this situation, then please go to Cash App and put cash tag prophetess V McBean. I am going to leave you with this affirmation. I will freely give faith, time, energy, attention, and money to what I want to multiply in my life. And I expect a supernatural harvest. I will give faith, time, energy, attention, and money to what I want to multiply in my life. And I expect a supernatural harvest. I will give freely, faithfully, faith, time, energy, attention, and money to what I want to multiply in my life, and I expect a supernatural harvest. This has been another Kingdom Economics message. I am Prophetess Vanessa McBee, and may your world overflow with blessings this day and every day. God bless you, and see you next week.